there are. We have um, both a business section and a workshop section to this um, this uh, evening tonight. I would like to switch um, the workshop session to uh, come up first. Uh, we have some visitors here, um, and we have some students that uh, need to also get home and probably get some homework done. So we'll move them move them up and switch um, also the placement of 6-1 with 6-2. So we'll start with 6-2, which would be the uh, student presentation. Very good. And we have some students from Marquardt here. And there you go. Come on up there. Where did you want us to stand? Go right up to the podium. Yeah. Is there a microphone up there anymore? I don't see one, but I don't know if you use it or not. Can you go up last? Um, when you just wait one second. We, we don't want to miss anything, so. Is it one of those little things like this? I'm wondering. Emma, can you push that down to me? But it is clear on the podium. Now, is one of these little things on the? No. They could be at the end of the table. Yeah, they could be right at the end of the table. What do you come to the end of the table? Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Hello? No, I don't think this works when we're on workshop mode. Okay, we can do it. That's fine. They can be loud. Oh, we can't see them better anyway. All right. Um, I'm Valerie Rasa. I'm a multi age fifth grade teacher. I teach at Wentworth Intermediate School. And every year we do, we study world geography. And then as a culminating project, we usually choose a country. Well, kind of, I choose the country. And, and then we kind of make a museum and it's our responsibility to teach the rest of the school and our, our schoolmates about this country. And it's the way we kind of uh, uh, apply all the different vocabulary and skills we've learned about geography to one country. And I try to choose a country that's really different in culture and land and climate so we're, you know, really seeing that everybody isn't like Scarborough. Um, so this year I was trying to think of which one to do and then when April 25th happened, uh, the, the earthquake in Nepal, it seemed like, wow, that would be a really different country and a unique country to study. And it kind of put a bee in my bonnet. And I went to school and talked to Mrs. Crosby about an idea I had. And she was immediately uh, interested, enthusiastic, and really supportive. And when I went to my class with my idea, they were even more enthusiastic and really wanted to do this project. So I'm going to let them uh, tell you a little bit about it. I'm going to sit right down and listen right along with you. And we'll start with Maya right here. Hi, my name is Maya Wolverton. I'm here from Wentworth School. I'm going to tell you about Nepal before the earthquake. Nepal is a beautiful, mountainous country filled with many important World Heritage sites. They are a constitutional democracy that recently overthrew the king in 2008. Nepal is landlocked by China and India. This makes it hard for the Nepalese people. They have issues getting imports and exports because of the huge mountains surrounding their little country. All of this causes them to be a very poor country. Nepal is filled with massive mountains that greatly affect their way of living. They are home to eight of the mo out of ten of the tallest mountains in the world. The mountains can be a good thing. Sherpas make their living on hiking the mountains, and in the war, they have the upper hand because of being used to the mountains. Nepal is a very religious country. People are loyal to their religions. It was a big problem when the earthquake hit because so many temples and monuments were destroyed. Nepal is home to so many important monuments, like where Buddha was born. Nepalese people live very difficult and interest and challenging lives. Even before the earthquake, there was lots of poverty. People only eat two meals a day, and they don't have running water. The average income of a, ne of a Nepalese person is $1,000. The U.S. average income per person is 40 times more. When the earthquake hit, not many people have the money to recover quick. It's going to take years. Imagine living like that, but that's only before the earthquake. Life is getting worse for them. They need as much help as soon, and as soon as possible. Hi, my name is Risa Sanders, and I'm here to tell you about how the Nepal earthquake was caught. Many years ago, India used to be an island so it had its own tectonic plate. Then, India was rammed into Asia, and its plate became overlapped with the Eurasian plate. On April 25, 2015, the Indian plate shifted. 
since the two plates were overlapped, it caused the ground to shake, a 7.8 earthquake out of the 10-point Richter scale. Aftershocks small earth, are small earthquakes, and Nepal has had many more than 100 aftershocks. One of them, a 7.3, didn't injure or kill many people, but it destroyed just as many important monuments and temples as the first one. Nepal needs help after the earthquake, and we should be the ones to help them. My name is Addison Lanu, and I am here to tell you about the different ways that we are planning to raise awareness about how destroyed Nepal is now. It has been a tradition in Mrs. Raz's class to every year hold a museum to educate the kids in our school about a country in the world. We are studying Nepal this year to raise money to support their community and help the people there survive after the two giant earthquakes. To get the word out to the community, our class is putting up flyers on local bulletin boards and organizing essays for the Scarborough leader. Our class needs, needs to work this hard to help Nepal because the two earthquakes both ranked in the sevens on the Richter scale. Nepal will have to wait over ten long years before their beautiful country is entirely restored. In addition to the flyers and essays, we will also be creating posters to put around the school and PowerPoints to educate the kids in our school and persuade them to donate and collect money. Please consider donate, donating and pay, and pay close attention to the most important way we will raise money, the Nepal Fund. Hi, my name is Riley Shea, and I'm going to tell you about the walkathon our class is organizing. Nepal's recent earthquakes were devastating. My class felt great empathy for Nepal, and when Mrs. Rasa suggested we do a walkathon to help Nepal through their earthquakes, we jumped on the opportunity. Nepal is a poor country, which makes it hard to restore things on their own. That is why they need lots of donations. It is also landlocked by two countries with many high mountains, making it harder to get to, save, and help people. Some Nepal people live in the mountains, making those villages very hard to get to, seeming near impossible. We are calling our walkathon a Nepalathon because it is a walkathon to support Nepal. It will be held in the bus loop at Wentworth School during each wing's recess on June 12th. We'll have music playing and a prize for the top collector. Every participant will get a donation sheet to write down who is donating and how much they are donating. Because it is the end of the year, we are asking collectors to get their money up front or when they write down the donation, so money gets given to us before the end of the year. We will, get, we will give all proceeds that we collect to the Red Cross to send to Nepal. Thank you for listening to our presentation. A, a great community outreach, and I appreciate all the work you're doing to try to raise this money because this is a really important event. So I'm glad you're engaging all the rest of the kids too and wanting to do it. So thank you. Ma'am, let's go ahead. Do you have a, a method of reaching uh, students in other school buildings? I have some funny staff. <laughs> that I offer to hand out to the primary principals and to the middle school principal if um, they could hang them up at the school, that would be helpful. Do you know somebody who made a presentation? I, I happen to know one of the The one that asked for the money up front. <laughs> Evaluation Development Team Presentation Ready. Yes, this evening we have a presentation by the Evaluation Development Team. Um, it is made up of uh, teachers and school leaders. And, and, yeah. and uh, for the last three years we have been working uh, collaboratively on learning, researching, and developing uh, part of our plan, and so this evening we have our group here, and um, Ann Lovejoy is going to review some of our work. I was going to project it, but clearly technology is not on our side today. It isn't? Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Joy. Well, 
Maybe they're trying to is save electricity to pay for the laptop. You guys want to move on to something else? Okay, well, um... Give um, a minute to regroup. <laughs> you can see that, or you can wait, wait a minute. And see the on, um, in the audience this evening, we do have people who are on the committee. We have uh, <laughs> Lisa Roberts, Maureen Bloom, Kelly Crosby, Alison Marchese, Deb Tate, Deb Austin, Barbara Hackelin, um, Ann Lovejoy, and myself, Joanne Sizemore, Donna Bealy. Um, we have been uh, the group that has been working. And there are other members who couldn't be with us tonight because they had either other obligations or some of them are taking classes at this time. So I, I could give a little background on how we started uh, three years ago. We started with um, the committee working even during the summer to start off with reading some books. We read the Art and Science of Teaching, um, Teacher Evaluation That Works, and um, from that, we also included with our PLT work that we were doing along with Marzano, we decided to go with the Marzano model for our teacher evaluation because it tied in with our PLT work. And that's part of our presentation tonight that you would see how some of this is all fitting in together. Um, one of the things we heard from the teachers is that it's very difficult to have a goal for your teacher evaluation and then to have a goal for your PLT. They wanted to have something where they could work on a goal that would help them with their professional development and growth and have it all tied together. And so that has been our goal is to see how to tie it all together and I think we are on a good path for that. And tomorrow? And tomorrow is our PLT day um, where um, it will be, everyone will be presenting and showcasing their PLT work this year. And then um, in the afternoon at each school, um, school leaders along with teachers who have been on the committee will present this PowerPoint to the rest of the staff in regards to the teacher evaluation model and PLT work for next year. One of the things from the state, there's been lots of changes. It's like a up and down cycle. Um, but we have heard that uh, the teacher evaluation uh, model was, uh, we were supposed to pilot it this year, but they extended it another year, so next year is a pilot year. And we just heard from the state that they're also postponing the uh, teacher assessment part of it uh, for growth for two years. So there's a lot of things that are still up in the air, but we have um, a lot of things completed that tie in with the PLT work and setting goals. So we feel good about that. Where we've taken the um, we've taken the stance where let's wait and see what the state has before we start getting um, information out to people that is maybe not correct, and uh, we'll go from there once we get some guidance from the state and where they're going.
um, aligns perfectly with Marlana's work that we're using as a district. Um, and so that is all embedded online and teachers can go online and get resources and do, make their plan, do a self-assessment, create a plan, um, watch videos of master teachers in, in, in action. There are four or five minute videos up to an hour long videos of, of examples of good teachers doing the kinds of things that they're going to be studying. So if you're studying how to get kids to interact with new information, you can go right to that kind of clip. You don't have to search for it and think you've seen it. It's right there. Um, so the timeline is all of next year because the state did give us an extension, which is nice. We did a mini pilot this year, which would have been great if we <laughs> had stayed and given us a little, you know, if the state hadn't said, oh, we're going to give you more time, we would have finished it up. But when we learned we had more time, we went, oh, great, we'll take more time to do our pilot, too. So that's what we're, we're doing next year as a pilot. So every teacher, every ed tech, every nurse, social worker, speech and language service will do a self-assessment based on Marzano's 41 elements of good teaching, and they'll create a plan, and we'll be working with that, that plan, and teachers will be able to choose their, their goal, their element that they're going to be working on that they want to get better at, because it's all about growth. So it's not something that you are great at. It's, it's something, I'm pretty good at this, but I really want to get better. I want to show growth, so I'm going to make a plan and show growth in this. Um, I don't know. So we're rolling it out t uh, tomorrow with the whole staff, and then on June 3rd, our last um, late start day, everybody will get their eye observation username and um, password, and they'll log in and start their self-assessment. They won't have enough time to complete it, probably, because we want them to be thoughtful and thorough, um, but they'll get it started at least and be able to do that. And then. Um, <laughs> and the self-assessment will help them identify those areas where they want to grow, and it will also help them identify um, uh, maybe I have the same area as Kelly Mullen Martin, so we want to be in a PLT together. So it will help us with that PLT goal as well, so they'll all be connected. wonderful triangle that we have it is our life here. It gives us our structure, so it shows how it's all interconnected. So the professional learning team create a goal based on their, um, what they want to study and what they want to grow in, and that's all coming from the Marzano learning map and the self-assessment and the EDT plan, the evaluation and growth plan. So they all, they all tie together. Um, can you read that now? Um, so anyway, so this, the school, the whole K-12 district is going to focus on design question one, which is setting rigorous goals and using scales to monitor progress and celebrate success. So we all are going to be doing that in our own fashion. So um, K-2 may, it may be doing it differently than 6-8, but we're all going to be looking at how do you set rigorous goals for kids? How do you communicate that to kids? How do you let them know where they are in their learning? and where they need to get to and what they need to do in order to get to that place. And how do you do it in student-friendly language? It's one thing to tell a 10th grader what they need to do to get better in a science class. It's another thing to tell a 5-year-old what they need to do to get better in reading or writing where they can understand it. So it's child-friendly language and, and learning what that looks like and how to communicate that well to kids. So that's something that we're all going to be working on in our own phases. And then the teachers will also get to pick a separate one for themselves. Um, and then over, this is, like I said, this is a presentation for the teachers. So over the summer, <laughs> rest, relax, have fun, but on a rainy day, you know, if you don't have anything else to do, pull out that Marzano book, take a look, refresh your memory, get excited about the year and what you want to do with your colleagues. So that's, that's our presentation for tomorrow. We just wanted you all to see it and know where we are and what we've been doing. Any questions? Um, you, you talked about the, the, the pilot next year, or you were in the piloting phase. It, it sounds like when you mean by piling, it's not like a few select teachers that are doing the whole process. You're rolling it out to the district, but in a limited format. Is that correct? I mean, not, well, not fully in, in implementing it, but just the whole district is. Well, we still have to evaluate teachers, mm -hmm. so we're still going to be doing that. So everything's going to be using a new tool, mm -hmm. but we'll doing summative evaluations with our old, older, with our current form.
So everybody is going to be doing it. It's not too limited. Hopefully everybody will get an observation done on them. Everybody will get to participate in it and really see what it's like. But only the people who are on the um, evaluation cycle will go through that piece of it. But everybody will create a growth plan and everybody will collect evidence to show growth for themselves because that's what you want to do every year, whether you're on the evaluation cycle or not. No, I just wanted to yeah. follow up with the, with the investment that we've made already in the eye observation. It does impact the whole district, not just yeah. a small number of people. Absolutely. Yeah. Every okay. Okay. And we yeah. included our ed techs yeah. in it. Not so much for the evaluation piece of it, because uh, the evaluation piece is geared towards uh, the professional staff of teachers, and um, but we wanted them to have an opportunity to develop a growth plan so that they could be part of the PLT process. Anyone else? I just um, I just want to say that that I know that Anne can make a PowerPoint <laughs> presentation because she presented to Kiwanis to a packed house last Friday on the Jump Start program, and it was absolutely fabulous. Thank Again, you thank you. Too, so I'm not sure where the problem is. It <laughs> <laughs> worked on last Friday. Thank you. And, um, and Anne, can you just quickly tell a little bit about how you picked Marzano and why? Well, I, I did not pick Marzano. Right. We picked Marzano. We spent um, the, the administrative PLT been a whole year studying different models, Danielson, Marshall, Marzano. Do we want to make our own? We want to pick and choose, cherry pick from a bunch of different ones. And I think our consensus was that Marzano really did the best job for us. And you know, his job is to research how to be a good teacher and how what good teaching looks like. We can't begin to replicate that on our own. And that's his job. He's a guru at it. So. We just felt that was the best one for our district that matched our needs. And from all the districts that studies states that we studied their models, that was the one that seemed to make the most sense. And then working with our EDT group for the three years, and part of the work that we had done in the schools already with the art and science, um, the whole group decided that uh, Marzano would be the best way to go in regards to the work that we have already begun. Well, the board um, really wants to recognize you. you. You're doing an amazing job. You're doing it on your own time, summers, vacations. You're there, sitting there, and, and creating all this work for the rest of the district. So we just have a little little something for you, Jimmy. Yeah. Donna is very extremely, extremely thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also want to share with the board that um, this has been an amazing group of teachers who have been very dedicated, and we've had lots of discussions, and we've had discussions where we all had to come to an agreement, and um, it's been ex extremely professional. <laughs> and, um, and we've spent time uh, talking about it and uh, discussing it and how, um, and working with the Teachers Association also in regards to um, the teacher evaluation system. So it's been a, an extremely positive, we're not done with our work. I would say we have, sorry everyone, I would say we have about another year to two years. <laughs> into the new business section of our agenda this <coughs> evening for 5.1. Um, this is for the second meeting on the FY 2016 school budget, and we're going to open to the public right now. Anyone wishes to speak? And Mr. Babine, would you come up first? Oh, 
probably happy that it's further uh, <laughs> further away I can be from her. Um, I, I just want to uh, express my gratitude to the uh, to the school board for the collaborative approach that we've taken in this past year. Last night we obviously came to a definitive decision, but what we would like to present to the uh, citizens of Scarborough, and that is very much a collaborative decision. It's one decision because we've taken that uh, approach to mean that um, our budget is one budget. It is not about the school budget, it's not about the town budget, but it is about a municipal budget that benefits the entire community. And I really want to say thank you to everyone as part of that. Um, the other piece that I really want to emphasize is that our work really isn't done. I joked last night uh, with someone and I said, um, last night was kind of like a wedding. Um, you do all the planning and uh, you get to the wedding and you have fun and then maybe you go home at night and have a little bit of uh, libation. But all the work in the marriage really happens the day after. And really that is where we are today because we have a lot of work to do to make sure that the citizens understand that this is a joint budget. This is the best budget that we can put forward. But I hope that everyone understands that this isn't the best budget that we can put forward. I've said for many, many years that during times of, an, um, of a recession, it's the time where you control expenses. Um, but there's also times in which there's growth, in which there's investment. And unfortunately, while we're in a time of what I consider investment, um, this isn't a budget that invests in education, nor is it a budget that invests in municipal services because we have significant gaps. But um, while we're six years late, uh, we're finally investing in one-to-one -one technology because it was something that we did invest um, conversationally um, in about five years ago, six years ago, and it's well overdue. And I think that this is a um, nice resolution to that. It moves us forward as a district. Um, I think it moves us forward as a community. And, and one thing for everyone to understand is that in this budget, um, we all benefit from it. It does not matter who you are. And um, there's always complexities. And that complexity is there's going to be um, men and women and families that can't afford the tax in this town. And I hope that, if anything, that we all join together and ask ourselves, um, what can we do so that all of our citizens can age in place? Um, because that's very important um, while we support an, the next generation of students. Because um, even when I was a young man, um, I grew up in a family of three kids. And um, in my family, we only paid the tax for one kid to go to school and somebody else paid for me to go to school or for my brother. And we all do that to this day. And the cost differential is very different. Um, we all have challenges. And the fact is we're on a face it together. And I, I just really want to stress, most importantly, is that, um, well, it may have taken, um, I think it was mentioned that Mr. Siazzo has been advocating for three years to really have this joint effort. Um, it's only taken one year for the two of us to actually make sure that happened. And I really want to extend my gratitude uh, to Chris and to the rest of the board for joining us with that because um, it's a very important start to something very different in this community. And so I, I really hope that uh, this is, I'm sorry, I'm starting with my voice. Um, this is a, a very different start to something different in this community going forward. So I appreciate everyone's effort. And I hope that if anything out of this message is that everyone understands that we need to get everyone who cares about the services, whether they are the fire department, the police department, uh, community services, or education, it's out to vote. They need to vote and tell us what they want because I do believe that this is the best budget that we can come forward with given the uncertainty, and I will stress the volatility of what is coming down from, uh, from Augusta because that responsibility rests with them. And I hope that we continue our due diligence and asking them why they're doing this to us. So, thank you. Anyone? Thank you. Chris, thank you. Uh, no, I, well, I, I, I don't think I could say anything to really to, to add to that. I think that was wonderful. I, w I will say, though, that every marriage has a honeymoon, and I hope ours lasts at least until June 9th. <laughs> <laughs> June 10th. But June 10th, right. Um, we have a couple of extra chocolate for you. <laughs> I guess, you know, again, just to paraphrase what Councilor Babine said, you know, Winston Churchill, I think, said it best. It, it's not the end, 
it's not even the beginning of the end, it's the end of the beginning. And we've got a lot of work to do moving forward. And I, uh, I think it was the progress we've made in a year has been uh, very impressive. And I expressed that to Councilor Bayline, Councilor Donovan, and Councilor Hayes last night that we can sit at a table and have different approaches <coughs> and different philosophies, but ultimately we come forward with what's best for the town. And I think the budget presents that. And, and uh, you know, we've, we, it's not the end. We've got a lot of work to do, but I think it's a great start. And I do think it will outlive whoever's sitting at the table. Uh, I think we've. we've that's what we want. Yep. Anyone else? Okay. I just uh, I told Bill Donovan last night that I thought his explanation was absolutely superb. I hope people will listen to it. Uh, he just was very basic in his presentation, and that's exactly what we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis in this town and every other town in the state of Maine. We need to educate our children. We need to protect our citizens with our fire and our police. We have exceptional employees all across this town. Nobody is getting paid the best in the state of Maine. They're not even getting paid the best in Cumberland County. I don't care what the position is. And we have some of the most loyal employees in this town of any town in our state. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the voters' support, and I hope they will go to the polls. Thank you, Sean, for working so closely with something, with Chris, because this has really been on his radar since he was elected. Anyone else? Yeah, I mean, ditto, basically. It, it was just terrific. It was, it was like night and day over last year. It was just so different. You know, it, 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 we, we were so relieved tonight, actually, sitting before the meeting. Um, and I think the council really had an opportunity last night to, you know, uh, raise their hand in favor of really moving teaching and learning for our high school kids in this town. That was huge, huge. You know, the impact is, is going to be well known, is already known by Mr. Creech and I'm sure well known by a lot of our teachers at the high school who welcomed this opportunity. And so you joined with us. Every one of the counselors voted in favor of that piece. And so that was terrific, really, for what it means, it's going to mean for kids now and in the future in this town. I, I do want to mention, and I say this more as a personal counselor, then um, we do need to be careful because the uncertainty of what we're dealing with, particularly at the state level, mm -hmm. um, is so unpredictable over the next three years, yep. the next four years. Um, and, and the reason is because we have absolutely no idea about the direction of the state and how it's going to support or in an uh, effort um, really uh, detract from supporting the municipalities. Mm -hmm. And so all I'm suggesting is that um, as an example, the one-to-one -one program, which I supported six years ago, um, is finally getting done. That's really a three-year capital investment into education that's um, going to take us out even beyond the three years. Um, but at the same time, we have significant gaps on the municipal side. Um, when, when we talk about our fire safety program alone, and there's going to have to be gives, um, um, give and take. And I think you all understand that. I don't think there's any imbalance in that. Um, you know, I'd love to see it where um, the, the educational uh, budget, they're asking for everything that they want, and the municipal side, they ask for everything they want, and we can give it. The fact is we can't. And so how do we provide for that? And right now, there's so much uncertainty. Um, while I have as much experience as Ms. Perry, I can't tell you where that's going to go. I cannot tell you I, uh, that this is the most uncertain time that I've had in the history of being a town councilor that I've ever had. Um, and Jackie and I go back to 1999, so we served in two different centuries, technically. Thank you for that, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Bob Mitchell saying, she shot, signed my diploma. <laughs> I've been waiting so long to actually crack that joke. <laughs> So, uh, but thank you very much for everything. So. Well, I think, too, that the tenor at the meeting last evening was indicative of the hard work that you have both done. Yep. And this is the first time in, in memory there, there was 
We disagree. That's okay. You can disagree without being disagreeable and nasty. And there have been times when the rancor has just been unbearable. Obviously, the entire time that I was gone, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Is there anyone else in the community who wishes to speak on this topic? Seeing none, we'll close the open session. And 5.2. Oh, wait a minute. No, we're still on the second meeting. Okay. Do I have a motion on the school budget? Uh, yeah, so we've got uh, a series of, of three motions tonight. Um, uh, we've, we've broken it down in finance sure? to uh, yeah. operations. Um, uh, from the school reductions, operations from the town reductions, and then the, the CIP motion. So I'll start in with the first motion, uh, move approval to amend the fiscal year 2016 school operating budget expenditures approved at the school board's first reading on April 2nd as follows. Reduction of the general fund operating expenditures by $1,385,642. Increased general fund operating revenues by $249,390. Reduce adult education expenditures by $4,219 and reduce school nutrition expenditures by $37,434. Uh, that is a grand total, I believe, of $1,841.77, is that correct, uh, in, in uh, reduction to the operating budget? Second. Very good. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I just want to, to, to point out that those were reductions that we as a board made independent of, of, the, um, of, of what the council's suggestions were. And I, I want that to be known because it, it is part of the process. We do get a lot of heat for coming out with a, a, an initial number that people think is extraordinary and extravagant and, and unrealistic, but it is a process that we work through. So those are not draconian cuts. Those are reductions that we as a board identified through the process. Um, they were effectively discussed that in, in joint finance committee meetings with the town. They were aware of it. There were no surprises. But that's part of the just general process of, of budgeting that we go through. Very good. Anyone else? No? Okay. All in favor of approval? Six. Very good. Plus one. May I vote on this? Yes, you may. Oh, you may. may. Absolutely. Very good. Six plus one. Okay, so uh, amendment number two, uh, motion number two, move for approval for fur to further amend the fiscal year 2016 school operating budget expenditures approved at the school board's first reading on April 2nd, 2015 as follows. Reduce the general, op general fund operating expenditures by a further $90,092 per direction of the town council. This reduction will be made at the regular instruction voter category with individual line item reductions to be determined by the school leaders. Second. Good. Any discussion? Uh, I, again, I, I just want to point out that, yes, this is a reduction in the overall, but the goal here was the compromise that the town was looking at at, at at level services budget. I think it's reasonable considering the position that we're in as a town collectively. And to Councilor Bainbein's point, there is, you know, there has to be an understanding of a give and take. I think it was, um, you know, no, no one wants to see the reduction, but I think it, it makes sense. And uh, I, I appreciate the work that we've done jointly in identifying that, and, and uh, I'm glad we could we could collaboratively come to that conclusion. But this is, this is at the direction of the council, and uh, mm -hmm. I, quite frankly, I think it is fair and reasonable. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Jackie? And when can we expect to see where the reductions will be made? Well, well the reductions will be made out of the regular in instruction category, which is the largest category, and as things settle through the through the tail end of this year, we're just going to have to absorb um, whatever we can, look at what our priorities are based on what our, um, uh, our, our education improvement plan is and, um, and settle out $90,000, $92 less than where we had hoped to be. From, from the finance perspective, we, we, we had a couple of options, right? In the past, when we've had large reductions at the discretion of the council, we've had to go through and identify areas because they've been so impactful, really, what we were going to do moving forward. The thought was that while this is a decrease, um, we want to maintain a certain amount of flexibility and we don't want to hamstring any programs this right now, but our work doesn't finish after election. 
So we, we've got some time to be thoughtful and, and conscientious with where we're making those decisions and how that's moving forward. So I think the idea was to continue that work in the finance after the budget's approved, but, but certainly with board involvement and, and board participation. The reason I ask is I think it's important for the people to understand where the reductions were made. Right. And, and I, I know what the superintendent's saying, and I understand that process, that it will be over several lines, so to speak. But I also believe that it's important that, uh, in some instances, that people be able to identify Absolutely. Uh, where that 90000 has come from. Thank you. Anyone else? No? All in favor? Six plus one. Thank you. Okay, final motion. Uh, move approval to amend the fiscal year 20, two, two, 2016 school CIP budget approved at the school board's first reading on April 2nd, 2015 as follows. Uh, reduce technology and CIP expenditures by $158,575 for the high school one-to-one -one laptop initiative and reduce the technology CIP expenditures by $75,000 for MLTI lease payments moved to the operating budget. Second. Discussion? Uh, again, um, these were uh, not the result of draconian cuts, let's say, of being mandated. This, uh, these reductions in the one-to-one -one were the good work of our technology director, Jen, um, who has been relentless in her, her uh, pursuit of the best possible option. And uh, it was in conjunction with council input and with Jen's hard work. Uh, this isn't something that we've been told to do. It's collaborative, and I think uh, it, it makes sense. It's part of the process. So as we identify those savings and those opportunities, we're, we're passing them on to the town and the taxpayers as best we can. And the MLTI uh, lease, um, it came out in one of our joint uh, meetings that we had had actually had that in two placeholders. We had it in the operating as well as the CIP, and it makes perfect sense to put it in one or the other. And from an accounting standpoint, we as we were trying to in the past, move as much into the operating budget as possible. We felt that it, it was more appropriate or most appropriate to move it into that side, and that was in conjunction, collaboration with the council's identification as well. So again, I, I want to be very clear that these, these are not cuts or reductions that people are mandating us to do. These are the natural reduction processes in the budget process. So it's, it's a good thing for the town. We're realizing it, and uh, hopefully we, we push it through. Thank you. Anyone else? All in favor? Six plus one. Thank you. Do you want to make any comments about the total numbers? Um, yeah, I mean, if you want, we can. Um, overall, the, the CIP expenditures were reduced by uh, $1,297,451 from the initial first reading, and the, the, the total tax reduction, as I mentioned before, from operating is down one point eight for one million or one point eight four two million total round. Um, so again, I it's I, I really want to emphasize the process um, is is a good one that we're developing. It's not perfect, it's not flawless. We've got to do some lessons learned for sure, but I think it's a great first step. Uh, we saw it in the tone in the council last night. We saw it with the community dialogue that we had. We saw it with the um, even the interaction that we've got from emails and and, and responses from, from voters or from constituents. Um, personally, I'll get on my soapbox now and say I, I think we've done a lot of, I know, shocking, we've, we've, we've done a lot of the work as a board. Um, we're only seven votes in the community and we've, we've done everything we possibly can. And I like to say to the people that I work with, you know, we've, we've set the table, we've given you the menu. The town has to decide what they want to order off this now and it's up to the voters at this point to move this forward. And I, I really can't emphasize enough the fact that we need to get out and support this budget. Because if it does fail, if it doesn't pass the first time around, we have really no, no position to take in terms of the reductions. There, it's going to be very, very drastic, I think. And we saw that in the council as well, and I think it's a fair statement to say, if the town doesn't speak up and tell us what they want, and we're left to figure it out on our own, bad things happen. So it's really got to go to the town, it's really got to be the vote has to be there, and we really need to get that word out across the board. And I know that the council members are doing a, a good job with their constituents. Um, 
I think we, we, we also need to, to uh, do a lot of voter outreach and, and get the word out. You can vote now. I think hey, today. That's right. Good point. Voting is available now absentee. You can go to town and vote. Um, I, I, I won't steal Ms. Shea's thunder, but and I don't have Facebook. I'm probably the last, one of the last three in Scarborough that doesn't. But I've, I've heard there are some very interesting posts, and I, I've, I've heard that they're um, begging and pleading for people to go to the polls. So waiting until the last day, you know, it's just it's two chances. There's plenty of opportunities in town to do it now. We're making it as open as possible. You can vote absentee. You can vote there. You can take the ballots home. You can have it mailed to you. There really isn't an excuse why you can't take 30 seconds out and vote, regardless of how busy you are. So I'm off my soapbox. And communications, do you, do you want to say anything about? Yeah, I think voting? we'll we're planning on sitting down. Is it next Wednesday? I believe we're meeting next Wednesday, and we'll you know six six six. All right, Tuesday, um, and come up with a plan. I mean, I think. Mm -hmm. We did see it today. There's been posts all over the place about um, voting, and people, I think, are already out there voting and talking. You know, I was at pickup today, and people are talking about it and engaged, and it feels very different. I think not only <coughs> as a school board working with the town council more closely and, and having that process work better. Mm -hmm. um, but also people are attending meetings and watching meetings and really understanding what's in this budget and that right. they need to go out and, and about it. Right. Emma, do you, do you see any role you can play at the high school for the kids that are 18? I was thinking during this whole conversation yeah. how many people I can just be like, tell your parents, go out and vote. And also all the seniors that are now turning 18 that can go out and vote. You can tell them, go out and vote, make this happen for our school. Very important. On your way out of the your parking lot. Yeah, my brother. On your way out of the parking lot. Stop by. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yeah. yeah. So okay. The meeting is actually Thursday at 11. I just checked into this in case. Okay. You write that down. Oh, and uh, oh, sorry, I, I just one more thing on the financials. I didn't okay. to say. Um, you guys have packets in front of you. That was a PowerPoint that that Kate had so diligently repaired. It's prepared. It's it is the backup piece with the with the data um, of how we got to where we're at. It, it is now posted on our website. Um, honestly, we didn't feel the need to get into the to the details of it here because. Pretty much the board's been following the whole process right along, as is much of the public, but the information is out there if you want it. Um, certainly, if anybody has questions or concerns or comments, email, phone calls are, are, are uh, always possible. They might be welcome, but um, they're possible. So all our information is out there. So. Can I ask Jody a question? Sure. When you gather at pickup, what does that mean? Yeah. I pick up my child at school. Uh -huh. from the main seats of peace and the Lerner Foundation to Scarborough High School. Do I have a motion for that? Move approval, move acceptance. Second. All right, and so now we have... Uh, David, David is here. Um, it's a, a support for an $800 donation to the Scarborough High School. Um, and um, David better understands the parameters in terms of the use of that money. It supports um, seeds activities, uh, but can... Um, also support some of the other work, uh, the civil rights team, and so on. So those things that are 
that are basically aligned with the, the same philosophy and vision and values of the seeds. Is that sufficient enough to say, David? It is. Okay. Maybe he can still remain sitting. Um, unless, you have, unless you have a question, at which point he can relate it to me and I'll just say it. So. If you'd like me to come. No, 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 you're all done. It's, everybody's tired these days. Any discussion? Questions? Anything? Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Well, um, well, I do have something to say um, because when it comes to the civil rights team, I I can't support it any more um, than I than I can actually explain to you. Um, my two daughters were among the very first uh, minority students that came into Scarborough, and at that time, uh, there was only one or two other minority students, also Asian students, and um, we've come a long way since then. And the importance of the civil rights team and in understanding each other's cultures and finding an acceptance. This school district worked all the way through the issue of the mascot name years ago. And, and I know there's still people who would like to have go back to that. But we've come a long way in that. And you've seen that happen throughout most of our state and across the nation. And so uh, when I see money like this coming forward, uh, particularly from Seeds of Peace, which I have been to the camp and I, I'm well aware of the kind of work they do up there, and it, it's just very exciting that we would get money from them to do the work here with our students. So, you know, I, I'm thrilled about this $800 because I think it can be put to great use um, particularly in the high school among the students deciding how are they going to use this in the spirit of C the Seeds of Peace camp. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm really thrilled about it. So, yes. Well, it's even um, trickled down because I don't know if it still is at Wentworth, but when my daughters were at Wentworth, they were on the civil rights, in the Civil Rights Club mm -hmm. there. So it's not just at the high school. I think it's now, mm -hmm. you know, Yes. Parts of it are trickling down even to the all phase levels in K2 included. It's right. just more um, part of a conversation that happens just for educating kids. So it's wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. else? Okay. All in favor of accepting that money? Six plus one. 5.3, the second reading of policy KJB, which is a distribution of community information. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this topic? Seeing none. Very good. Do I have a motion? Uh, move approval for a second reading of policy KJB. Second. Any discussion? Do you want to say anything about it, Kim? Um, it's the second reading. It's the distribution of community information, and we talked about at the last meeting that there are um, most of our distribution of any information now will be online, and there is a link through the school website that will, um, as a courtesy, we will post things that relate to children and education and activities that um, not promoting a religion or a political party or any of the things that we would not um, be supporting as a school district and you know any individual group and they're all nonprofits that's the other thing too that these are all nonprofits that we are doing this as a courtesy for and so um, and that no materials will be distributed on school grounds for those groups either so not at a game not at a concert um, whether in person or online so it's just an up updating a policy just to catch up with the times really anyone Okay, all in favor? Six plus one. A motion to approve the minutes of April 2nd, 2015. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Any corrections? No. Very good. All in favor? Six plus one. And a motion for the minutes of April 9th, 2015. Move approval. Second. Very good. Any questions about this one? All in favor? Six plus one. Very good. Do I have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of hearing the superintendent progress update? Pursuant to MRSA 4056A, 
a self-evaluation will be discussed and proposed 2015-16 goals not to return to public session. So move. Second. All in favor? Six plus one. Very good. We are adjourned.